and welcome to another episode of On Hand Cooking. I want to start this episode out by telling you that I love you. I love you because you're human. I love you because you're here. And if you're here, maybe you love me too. And what a great way to be a part of this world, loving each other. This is week two of Cast Iron Skillet Month in the On Hand Kitchen. And if you didn't get a chance to watch last week's episode, episode 18, you might enjoy that because it'll teach you all about how to use, season, and care for this mighty kitchen workhorse. And if you're already familiar with your cast iron, well, you're gonna love today's episode because today we're making cauliflower pizza crust deep dish pizza in our cast iron skillet. Let's get right into it. We'll start by making our nutritious and delicious cauliflower pizza crust. All you need for this delicious culinary endeavor is one head of cauliflower washed and cut into florets, a cup or so of Parmesan cheese, a cup or so of mozzarella cheese, two sweaty little eggs, some garlic salt, and some sea salt. Now I would add pepper to the crust too, but I don't have any. And all that feels rather irresponsible to run out of a culinary staple when you're hosting a cooking show. It's just another example of how we roll in the on-hand kitchen. You work with whatever you got on hand. But back to that crust. We'll start by ricing our cauliflower, and this can be done in your food processor or by hand using a hand grater. Because by now you know how much I love shouting over my kitchen appliances, I've chosen to use the food processor. And working in batches, we'll just rice that cauliflower until it looks like, well, rice. Then we'll transfer our riced cauliflower to a bowl lined with a clean dish towel, like this. Now, rice and cauliflower can be messy, but it's worth it. If you remember from the Noki episode, cauliflower is packed with antioxidants and nutrients that you can't get anywhere else. Now, in order to get a crispy crust on our pizza, we want to try to drain as much water out as possible. That's why we have the dish towel. And we'll also sprinkle our cauliflower with some salt to help pull out some of that water and add some salty flavor. And let it sit for about 10 minutes while that salt works its magic. And while we're waiting on our cauliflower, we'll preheat our oven to 425 degrees. And after about 10 minutes, it's time to wring out all that water from our riced cauliflower. And we'll do that by simply gathering up our cauliflower into our clean dish towel and giving it a good wringing. And it is truly amazing the amount of water one head of cauliflower holds. Just keep wringing that cauliflower until you can get as much water out of it as possible. Because the more water we get out now, the crispier the crust. And I like a crispy pizza crust. I must have gotten two cups of water out of that thing. That is one wet vegetable. Then we'll just take our strained cauliflower and drop it into a large mixing bowl. And then we'll just add in all of our other ingredients. Mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, garlic powder, two eggs, slightly beaten, and now would be a great time to add your pepper if you have it. Then we'll just mix everything together. Really get in there. You want everything to be nicely integrated. And when everything's come together to make a nice dough-like substance, like this, we'll get ready to move things over to the star of our show. And even though we already have a nice, shiny, non-stick seasoning to our cast iron skillet, I like to add a little butter to the pan for a little added buttery crispiness. So we'll just work that butter into the bottom and the sides of the pan. And then we'll just add our cauliflower dough to the skillet. And using the back of your spatula, spoon, or even your fingers, we'll press it into the pan like this. Because we're making a deep dish pizza in our cast iron skillet, we're gonna to wanna to make a nice, thin, even layer, running it up the edges of the side of the pan. Like this. And don't worry if your dough feels wet. It makes terrible sounds when you press on it. Because we're gonna bake this guy on a pretty high heat at 425 for about 25 minutes, and this is gonna get nice and crispy and golden. Let's get it into the oven. And while that crust is in the oven, we can start working on our sauce and our toppings. Now certainly you can use a jar of pizza sauce or even spaghetti sauce, but I like to simply run a can of tomatoes through the Vitamix. Just simply drop a can of tomatoes into the Vitamix with a little salt and pepper, if you have it. And run it for just a minute or two until you have a nice thin sauce. Then we'll just slice up whatever vegetables we have on hand. Now certainly you can top your pizza with anything you like, meats, cheeses, but since I like to get as many vegetables into our diet as possible, I'm really gonna load our pizza up with lots of fresh cut veggies, like mushrooms and peppers, onions, zucchini, some sliced olives, and a bit of fresh basil from the garden. We'll also add a bit of fresh mozzarella, but you can use shredded mozzarella, Parmesan, cheddar, whatever cheese you like. 
or no cheese at all since there's so much baked into that delicious crust. And speaking of crust, let's go take a peek. It's been about 25 minutes and our crust is perfect and golden. Using a dish towel so you don't burn your hand on that hot cast iron handle. Take your perfect pizza crust out of the oven. And if you're lucky enough to have an awesome sister-in-law, you'll set it down on a crab-shaped trivet. Like that. And now comes the fun part. We get to add all those delicious toppings to our pizza and get it back into the oven. First, we'll just top it with a little sauce, really moving things up the edges of that pizza. Then we'll add some cheese and some zucchini, pepper, mushroom, onion, and finally, our cute little green olives. And my goodness, I don't think I could fit another veggie on this thing. Let's get it back into the oven for maybe just another 10 minutes or so. We won't be adding the fresh basil until the end because I don't like cooked basil. If you like cooked basil, well, you know what to do. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's see how we did. Oh yeah, we did great, you guys. Oh yeah. Now, our pizza is definitely cooked and ready to go, but we'll just let it rest for about 10 minutes to let everything settle in before we cut it. Then we'll just give our cast iron cauliflower pizza a little slice. And we know what time it is. It's tasting time. Oh my goodness. This pizza is a crispy, cheesy, healthy, delicious, nutrient dense, amazing success. And we did it again, friends. Thank you so much for joining me for another terrific video of On Hand Cooking. If you like this video, please subscribe below and please be sure to share it with your friends and family and fellow humans. Remember, you can find me on Instagram at On Hand Cooking or on Facebook at Robin Moriarty. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. I wish you peace and love and happiness, and I can't wait to see you again next week for more cast iron skillet cooking.